One of the tricks thieves use to gather information about your routine is so simple that you may not even give it a second thought. But the next time you hear a quiet crackle under the sole of your shoe, stop and check what it was. The chances are high that you'll find yourself face-to-face with a crushed cookie. If that's the case, it's your clue that something has gone terribly wrong. The thing is, this is a rather effective tool criminals use to find out if you've left on a trip or when exactly you come home in the evening. A cookie is such an innocent object that people don't usually give it much thought, if they even notice it at all. You arrive home, step on the cookie, make it crumble, and automatically reveal all your secrets to burglars. They know for sure if the house is lived in and can also figure out the schedule of its owners. Things get even worse if you're away from home. The cookie under the doormat remains whole, thus alerting criminals that the house is perfect for a break-in. So, if you find some treats under your doormat, that's pretty bad news. Someone is interested in your house and watching it. It might be a good idea to notify the police or take some safety measures. Now, the ploy with a cookie is just one of the numerous tricks used by burglars. One more sign that can alert you to the fact that you're being watched is white pebbles left near the house or in the driveway. This means that a criminal has already visited your home and marked it as worth entering. Another reason why thieves may have left the pebbles is to indicate that your house stays empty during the day. So, if you're walking along the street and notice a USB flash drive sticking out of a curb or a wall, don't get confused. You have most likely stumbled across a dead drop. Despite its ominous name, this is a global art project that has borrowed some tricks from the world of spies and espionage. Lots of people who know about this project are happy to be able to put on their black coat and dark sunglasses and go to swap confidential information with others. The thing is that many decades ago, spies had their own ways to exchange secret materials. There was a live drop when spies met in person, but this was often extremely dangerous. That's why a dead drop system was invented. In this case, some loose bricks in a wall in an alleyway hid important documents that had to be picked up later. Nowadays, there are more than 1,500 dead drops all over the world. And the accumulated data on these flash drives reaches 10 terabytes. You can come across a dead drop on any continent you visit, except Antarctica, maybe because there are not so many walls there. So if you find one, what do you do with it? First of all, it's highly inadvisable to connect random USB flash drives to your computer. You never know what viruses are lurking there, looking forward to destroying your hard drive content. And while risk is a part of the game, don't overdo it. If you're 100% sure that you want to play, secure your computer as well as you can, or even better. Secondly, you can't even guess what information will be waiting for you on a flash drive. Anyone can download videos, photos, or text files, and this has already led to several problems. Speaking of which, have you got a parcel with a USB stick in it? Whatever you decide to do with it, don't plug the flash drive in. Such cases have been more and more frequent in Australia. The police warn people that hackers have invented a new tactic. They drop unmarked memory sticks to letterboxes. It'll probably come as no surprise that these devices contain malware able to mess up your computer. They evidently rely on human curiosity and, in all honesty, it pays off. People can't fight an inexplicable desire to check the contents of a mysterious gift. As a result, almost half of USB sticks received by post get plugged in. After that, people start having serious problems with their laptops and computers. For example, fraudulent media begins to stream service offers, or computer viruses harm files and programs on a PC. So, no touching the free flash drive, okay? Now, you leave a shopping mall, your office, an airport, and go to the parking lot to find your car. You unlock it and put the key in the ignition. When you're about to start your vehicle and drive away, you see something strange on your windshield. Is that a $100 bill wrapped around your wiper? Oh, you could certainly find a way to spend this unexpected gift. But do you really think someone accidentally put money on your windshield and forgot all about it? Beware, this is nothing but a ruse. Because as soon as you get out of your car to get a closer look at this mysterious banknote, the owner of the banknote will take action. They will get into your car and drive off at a record-breaking speed. 
let's admit that no one would turn off their ignition and take their belongings with them if they got out of their car to check the windshield for a C-note. As a result, in under a minute, you'll lose your car, your wallet, and your documents, and you'll be left stranded in the parking lot. People have recently started to find some article of clothing, like a shirt for instance, lying on their windshield or wrapped up in their wipers. If you ever happen to be one of these people, don't fall into this trap and don't try to remove the object. Just get in your car and drive away as fast as you can from the place you were parked. This seemingly misplaced garment is actually a new con being used by muggers and thieves. It works like this. If you see some random piece of clothing that prevents your wipers from moving or obscures your view, your first reaction will be to remove it, of course. But while you're distracted untying it or trying to get it off, the criminal has plenty of time to jump you. The most common place for this sort of scam is parking garages. They're usually badly lit and pretty deserted, which means there are few witnesses around and plenty of dark spaces for the attacker to lie in wait. Now, if one day you come home and notice some graffiti or markings on your door or house, call the police immediately. Even if it just looks like a teenage prank or a simple scratch, it's better to be safe than sorry because burglars use certain marks to tell other criminals different things about your house. For example, something resembling a Roman numeral 2 means that the homeowners are rich, so the place is a great target. On the other hand, a crossed circle tells other burglars that there's nothing valuable to take from the house. Hmm, kind of makes you want to mark your own house like that. Now, a long horizontal rectangle divided into four parts means the place has a big aggressive guard dog. A triangle divided into two parts by a vertical line tells criminals to hit the place only at night, while a reversed one says that a house or apartment is free after dinner. And something looking like a combined A and K lets their fellow burglars know that the house is always full of people. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock. Or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power, leaving them only halfway in. Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak, fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass, starting up the barbecue just as long as it's a sunny day. Put oil absorbent paper on a clean, smooth surface. Then squeeze your toothpaste evenly on the paper blob by blob. Sprinkle it with baking soda. And when the toothpaste pieces solidify, put them in a small portable box or bottle. When you need to brush your teeth in the wild, just take one blob, put it in your mouth, and use your toothbrush as usual. If your condiment collection takes up too much space in your picnic basket, Use some straws to create many versions of your favorite spices. Cut one third of a straw, pinch one edge with forceps, and melt it on fire to seal the edges together. Then, use a kitchen funnel to pour the spices into this mini bottle and seal the second edge using the same technique. Sign the name of the spice and place it in a small box. When your shoes get wet in the wild, find some stones of a suitable size. Put the stones in a pot with water and boil them. Place the heated stones carefully inside your shoes. You can use kitchen tongs or a ladle to carry the stones. The shoes will soon get dry. If you don't want to boil the stones, here's another way. Take a plastic bottle, pour hot water inside and wrap the bottle with toilet paper. Then place the bottle in your shoe and wait for 30 minutes. It should be enough to make them crispy and comfortable. If you're eating soup in the wild, you can cut an emergency spoon out of a plastic bottle. Cut out the shape of a spoon with a knife in the place where the walls of the bottle meet the bottom. And don't forget to add a comfortable handle. Garlic and onions can be easily peeled with a metal bottle cap. Speaking of metal caps, you can open a bottle with one of those using your wedding band, metal spoon, or another bottle. 
Went fishing but forgot your knife at home? Use a carrot to peel the fish. Cut the carrot at an angle and rub the fish scales with one half of the carrot. The scales will easily come off. Punch holes in a cork of a plastic bottle and screw it tight. Then cut off the top of the bottle and turn it upside down. Place a rolled napkin or toilet paper in the neck of the bottle. Then put some coal, grass, and stones and pour turbid water into this handmade filter. Later, you can boil this filtered water and drink it if you get thirsty in the wild. Melt a bar of soap and draw it up into a syringe. Squeeze the soap into an empty pill pack and seal the template with tin foil. Use one of the tiny soaps to wash your hands anytime. To make your grilled patties juicier, press a groove in the middle of the patty and put ice on it. Wait for the ice to melt and fry as usual. You can make a camping washing machine using an ordinary bucket with a lid. Cut a small hole in the middle of the lid and insert a plunger handle into it. Pour the laundry detergent into the bucket. Put in clothes and water, close the lid, and rinse the clothes with a plunger until the stains are removed. If you can't pick out gum stuck on your clothes, put a piece of ice on it, and the gum will tear off easily. You can also put your clothes in a freezer for a while and then tear off the gum. Detergent bottles are usually too big to take on a camping trip. Take a sheet of thin paper and spread the detergent evenly on the paper. Cut the paper into small square pieces and put them in a waterproof box. When you need to wash the dishes, just put one piece on a wet sponge. While walking in the woods, collect tree branches, about the width of a finger. Bring the branches home, wash and cut them into equal pieces. Put them in a bowl and glue the sticks together in the shape of the bowl, using hot melted glue. Your stylish handmade fruit tray is ready. If the lid of the tin just wouldn't open that easily, try this life hack. Wrap the lid with adhesive tape, then gently pull it open. If your kettle is full of scale, pour in some water and put a piece of lemon inside. Boil the water, then wash the kettle, and the scale will be gone. In case you get hungry in the wild without a fishing rod, try another way to catch some fish. Take a large empty plastic bottle, cut off the top part, and turn it upside down. Tie the two sides of the bottle mouth with a rope. Crush some instant noodles and put them inside the bottle. Throw the bottle into the river. This trap will surely attract fish. Make matches that will never get blown out in windy weather. Wrap the matches in napkins and dip them in melted wax. Wait for them to dry and voila, you have matches that won't go out. Now, if you're falling from a great height, try to copy a skydiver's position. Your head and chest should face down. Spread your arms and legs and bend them at a 90 degree angle. If possible, choose a place to land. Bushes or haystacks can cushion your fall. Water surface is only safe if you fall from a height of no more than 150 feet. Before landing, try to position your body vertically. Remember that it's always better to fall forward than backward. Protect your head and neck with your arms locked together. Actually, none of this will save you, but it will give you something to do before they name the crater after you. Now, if you're plummeting from a cliff, do your best to break your fall down into several parts. The shorter they are, the better. Each of these parts will absorb some impact of the fall. This way you'll have much higher chances of surviving. Try to grab onto a sturdy object, like a bush or a rock on your way to the bottom. It'll slow you down. If you see a piece of wood or a plank, snatch it too. It might help to soften your fall when you hit the ground. Most importantly, don't hold your body stiff. This is likely to harm your internal organs. Cover your head and try to land on your feet with your knees slightly bent. In fact, once you hit, everything about you will be slightly bent. But hey, you gotta try! If a building you're in collapsed and you ended up under a pile of debris and rubble, try to keep your panic at bay. Yeah! Your main task now is to protect your breathing organs and make your air supply last as long as possible. If there's enough space, take off your shirt or t-shirt and tie its bottom in a knot. Then put it back on your head through the neck hole so that the knot is on top of your head. You'll get a makeshift hood that will protect your face from dust, sand, and debris. It will also provide you with a bit of oxygen while you're trying to get back to the surface. If you're stuck in a falling elevator, lie down on your back and try to occupy as much space as possible. Your body fat and muscles are compressible they'll absorb some of the impact force. 
If you can't lie down, sit on the floor. It's still better than standing. Your backside will act like an airbag in a car. But whatever position you choose, cover your head. The best way to do it is to put one arm in front of your face and the other on the back of your neck. If you get stuck in the wilderness, first of all, find some water. Check low-lying areas. If there are mountains, look for water at the foot of the cliffs. If you manage to find some rainwater, don't let it stay in the container too long. It may go bad. Pay attention to ants climbing trees. They're likely to be traveling toward a source of moisture inside a tree. A bottle of water can help you start a fire if you keep it under direct sunlight long enough. The bottle will act as a lens, gathering all the heat in one spot. Use fire and smoke to signal for help. Cover the flames with a big branch or with a pan for 3-4 to four seconds. This will gather enough smoke. Then let this puff of smoke go. Now, if you've fallen through the ice, try to get back to its edge. Don't pull yourself out by grabbing it. The edge will keep breaking, and this will wear you down in no time. Kick your legs until your body is positioned horizontally in the water. After that, get out of the water and onto the ice. Once you've made it there, don't stand up. Your weight should be distributed over a larger area. Then the ice will be less likely to break. Start rolling toward the shore like seals do. If you have a muscle cramp while swimming, try to turn on your back and float this way. Massage the bottom of your foot or the part of your leg that feels tight. If you have a cramp in the back of your leg, bend it at the knee and pull it toward your chest. You should be still floating on your back. Try to relieve the cramp by pulling your toes inward. If you get caught in an indoor fire, stay low and crawl toward the nearest exit. The smoke usually rises toward the ceiling. That's why crouching might keep you from inhaling it. If you have a piece of cloth or a handkerchief, put it against your mouth. It'll act like a filter against the smoke. Fall to the ground and roll back and forth if your clothes have caught fire. If you do have a fire extinguisher, aim it at the base of the flames. It's much more effective. And keep in mind that if you break a window, you'll let in more oxygen, and this will feed the fire. And here's what you should do to stay safe during a natural disaster. If you see the area getting flooded while you're outside, run away from any streams, storm drains, or rivers. Try to get to higher ground. If you're stuck at home, move to the roof if you think it's safe enough. If a tornado is moving towards you and you don't have time to escape, find a ditch or some low place. Lie down and cover your head with your hands or clothes. If a tornado happens while you're inside and there's no basement in your house, hide in a bathtub. Use a pillow to protect your head from any kind of debris that may fall down. The plumbing in the bathroom walls adds structural strength to the place. But if your bathroom has windows or an exterior-facing wall, pick a more secure place, for example, a closet. The more walls separate you from the tornado, the better. If you're outside during a storm and you suddenly feel your hair stand on end, it's your cue lightning is about to strike. Your skin might start tingling, and you're likely to hear some clicking or buzzing sounds. Immediately crouch down and place your head between your knees. But even though you should be as low as possible, do not lie down. The only thing touching the ground should be the balls of your feet. Keep your heels together. This way, instead of running through your entire body, electricity is likely to go in one foot and out the other. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.